Hi, my name is Chris Thomas. Welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you how to use SpellingCity.com, a free American website designed to support the learning of spellings. This is done through various online activities, printable worksheets, and things like that. And because it's all web-based, it's all accessible from home as well, which is fantastic. So to get started, we simply click on Register here, and then fill in all our details. Once we've entered a suitable username, we click check availability just to make sure it's available, which it is, and then we continue and enter our email address. Okay, once we've filled that information in, we just need to tick to say whether we're registering as a parent or a teacher. I don't believe there's any difference in functionality, but I'm going to click to register as a teacher. Now, when I do that, it's asking me to find my school. This is so SpellingCity.com can group together spelling lists from the same school. So I'm going to click on Find My School here, and then I need to enter a name. Now, I'm just going to type in Tavistock. Let's just say that we worked at the Tavistock Primary School and I'll click on Find My School. Now the reason I chose Tavistock is I know that there aren't any schools there that are registered. And if that's the case with you, then you can still continue with the registration process. You simply need to enter your own school onto the field rather than actually picking your school from the list. And it will work in exactly the same way. But I'm actually going to pick my school from the list. I'll just enter part of the name of my school. It's going to ask me to pick which city it's in. And I work at a school in Ash. And there's my school, so I simply click on that. And as you can see, it's automatically added the address of the school onto that page. Finally, I can enter a message that I'd like to display to students and parents when they access my spelling list. So this can be entered here. I'm quite happy with the default text that's appeared, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Next, I'll click on Register. So when we get to this page, we can see that an email with further instructions has been sent to me. I'll need to open that email and click a link just to verify my account. So as you can see, I've got a new email here. When I click on that, it's welcoming me to the Spelling City service, and it's asking me just to verify my account by clicking on this link, which I'll do. Okay, there we go. As you can see, my account is now active, and it's asking me to log in, which I do from these two boxes in the top right-hand corner. Right, now I'm logged in, I can start to create some spelling lists. And I do that from this button here, List Management. Now you'll notice I have no spelling lists set up at the moment, so I need to click on this button here to create a new list. When I do that, it pops on a window asking me to enter various bits of information about my spelling list, starting off with a list name. So I'm going to give my list a suitable name there, and I then need to select a grade level. Now it's worth remembering that this is an American website, and so these grades are therefore going to have less importance outside of America. But unfortunately you do actually need to enter a grade, otherwise it won't accept the list. So I'm going to click on Other at the bottom. Next it's asking me to enter a description of my spellings. This could be used to describe the words that are on the spelling list, or any pointers or reminders that you'd like the children to remember. For example, I before E except after C, for example. So I'm going to enter a suitable description for this list of spellings. Okay, there we go. So these spellings all have the OO phoneme. I'm now ready to start entering my spelling words. And to do that, I simply type the words into these boxes. Okay, those are my five boxes filled in, but I actually have seven words on this spelling list. So by clicking this button here, I can create two extra text boxes that I can use for those extra words. Right, that's all my spellings entered. I've now got two extra options at the bottom. Firstly, word order. This is the order in which the words are displayed on activities or printed worksheets. I can keep it exactly as entered, so the order you're seeing them on the screen at the moment. I could display my words alphabetically or random. I'm going to pick random. The second option is whether this spellings list is ready to actually be published. If you're working on a list of spellings over a period of time and you don't actually want it to be visible to the children yet, then you need to click on No. But I'm quite happy that this is ready to go, so I'm going to leave that on Yes, and then I'll click on Save. As you can see, it's set up that spelling list, and it's now listed on that table. Now I've just realised there's a couple of extra spellings I'd like to add to this spelling list. So to do that, I click on Edit, and it's going to take me to the spelling list edit page. Now I could add extra words using these buttons here as I showed earlier, but I think there's actually an easier way of setting up spellings lists, and that's to use the batch entry mode. 
because here you don't have to mess about with clicking buttons to create new boxes. You simply put one word on each line or separated by commas and the website will do the rest for you. Now I've got some spellings set up in a text document on my desktop. So if you already have spellings saved on your computer, it's really easy to use the batch entry to copy and paste them into that window. So I'm going to select my spellings here, copy them, go back to the website, clear what's already in there, and then paste those new spellings in. Now you'll notice the last two words on this spellings list are names. I've got the name Bruce and Lewis. Now this could be a slight problem. The Spelling City database is enormous and it has so many words, but often you find that some words aren't listed and that is especially the case with names. So we're going to see what happens when I click on save. Right, as we can see, it's told me that there's a problem with some of the words on my list and it's picked out those names. So now I've got a couple of options. One would be to ignore the error and not to make any changes. If I did that, whenever children access this activity, it would pop up to tell them that there's a couple of words that there's a problem with. I don't really like that, so I'm going to click on edit the list and remove those words. Right, now I've removed the words that weren't working, I can click on save and it's going to take me back to list management. So now I've created my spelling list, I can actually print some resources for use in the classroom. To do that, I'm going to click on view. This is going to show me my spelling list as I've just created and you'll notice this link here called handwriting worksheets. When I click that, it's going to reveal various options where I can specify how I want my worksheets to appear. I've got different styles of handwriting, arrows on or off, the arrows are used to show children the order in which their pen should move over their letters, whether the words should be written as lower or upper case, and then finally the actual size for the font. So I'm just going to go and set up some of these to show you how this would work. So once I've made the changes that I want to make, I simply click on print worksheet and the website will generate a PDF for me which I can print or save onto my computer. Now you can see here what was meant by the arrows option with the arrows showing the direction the pen should be moved in. So that's how you can produce handwriting worksheets from your spellings list. It's worth experimenting with the options in this box to make sure you get something that matches your school's handwriting policy. Next I'm going to show you some of the games that are available and to access that I simply click on play a game. Now listed here are all the games that you can play. You'll notice that some of these have printable worksheets as well. For example, the word search. Let me show you how that works. I'm presented with various options where I can choose how difficult my game is going to be and also what words I'd like to use. When I'm ready, I simply click on play. It's going to jumble up all my words into a word search. And if this was something that I wanted to print out, I simply click on print from here and print it as usual. So this is a great way of producing a word search very quickly for your spelling list. Let me take you back to show you some of the other games that are available. So listed here are all the other games that are available. They're fairly self-explanatory, but I'll just show you a couple of them to give you an idea. First, unscramble. Here, the letters of the words are all jumbled up into a different order, and the children have to drag them down into the box, putting them in the correct order. This is a great game to play on the interactive whiteboard, and it really gets the whole class involved. And when the children get it right, they'll get a round of applause, and then they can click on next to go on to the next word. That's unscramble. The next game I'm going to show you is Match It. This is a really good game because it actually helps children understand the meaning of the words they're learning. Here we've got our spelling words down the left hand side and we've got sentences on the right and we've got to pair up the right word with the right sentence. Once I'm happy with my choices I simply click on Submit. Excellent! And we get a nice bit of feedback there telling us that we've done a good job. So those are some of the games children can play to help them learn their spellings. But in addition to that, there is also a teaching and testing module they can use. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to return to my list management. I'm going to click on view for my list, and then I'm going to click on teach me.
And then when I'm ready to start, I can select the word I'd like to use from here. Let's say through. Through. T H R O U G H. Through. She went through the door. Through. And the website's going to teach me how to spell that word by reading me the word, going through each letter, and then giving me a sentence to give me its context. When I'm happy that I've learnt all my words, I'm ready to test myself. And to do that, I click on Test Me. Get ready for the test. Don't peek at your list. Begin. And to test yourself, you simply click on the button, say it. Bamboo. And you'll hear the word. If you're not quite sure what the word is, or perhaps you're given a homophone and you need to hear its context, then you can click on Sentence. Pandas like to eat bamboo. Okay, then when you're happy that you've entered all the spellings correctly, you click on Check Me. Notice I made a couple of deliberate mistakes, root and through. So it now gives me the option to teach myself those words. Or if I'm happy that I've now relearnt those words, then I can click Retest and test myself just on those words that I got wrong. So that's how you actually create spelling lists and then use them either within the classroom or at home. But if children are actually going to use these spelling lists at home, then they need a way of finding them. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So if you direct your children to visit the site spellingcity.com, they'll need to click this button, Find a List. From here, there are certain criteria they can use to search for a spelling list. They can search for the name of a teacher, a parent, the username of the teacher, or the list name. So I'm going to search by list name, and I call mine Red Group. Now you'll see here the problem with using this method. There's so many schools that are set up with a Red Group spelling list, so I find this isn't really the best way of searching for spellings. The alternative would be to search by teacher name, but I think it's so much better if you can provide children with a direct link to their spellings. So let me show you how you do that. I'm going to start by logging in again. Once I've logged in, I'm going to go to List Management to find the spelling list I want to link to. And I want to link to my red group spellings. So you'll notice when I roll over the View button that the web page gives me a URL, a web address for this exact spelling list. So that's what I really want to copy and paste maybe into my school website or onto a blog of some sort. So by right clicking on the View button, I can choose Copy Shortcut. And what this does is it will copy that URL into the memory so I'm ready to paste it into my blog or my web page. I'm going to show you what it's done just by pasting that into my text document. And there we go, there's a direct link to the Red Group spelling list. So if that was used on a school website, the pupil would simply need to click the link and it would take them straight to their spelling list page. So that's how you can use spellingcity.com to support the learning of spellings within the classroom. Thanks very much for watching.